Okay, so you got yourself an old Kenwood hybrid radio. This one just happens to be a TS530S. Uh, and you've noticed that your receive and your transmit aren't peaked at the same point. And what I mean by that is when you set up your radio, you peak your transmitter circuit. But without touching the VFO, if you've noticed, you peak your transmit circuit, then you come over to your drive control and you turn it, your receive signal comes up. That means your transmit and your receive circuits are not in alignment. And what causes that is, this control actually has three sections. And each of those sections has separate adjustments. <laughs> and some of them are shared, some of them aren't. Some are receive, some are receive and transmit, some are transmit only. So what we actually have off of the drive control here the shaft comes back, there's actually three variable capacitors right here, you know, potato slicers, okay? Now, each of these sections then has an associated set of adjustments down in here, the transformers or coils, okay? So, capacitor and an adjustment for each band. Another air variable capacitor, adjustment for each band. Last air variable capacitor and an adjustment for each band. If they get out of alignment, that's exactly what can happen. So your receive and transmit will no longer be peaked at the same point. Now, this is something, if you feel safe getting in here, because remember, there are high voltages in this radio, but if you feel safe working on the radio, so just be forewarned, it's an electronic device and it plugs into a wall. Um, and remember, this is tube type, <laughs> so there are high voltages in here. Now, most of them are protected inside of this RF shield here in the RF cage for the PA unit, but just be aware of that. Now you don't need to take the bottom cover off of the radio. The only thing you need to take off is the top cover because all of the adjustments we're going to be making are right there. And it's a fairly simple procedure. So all you need are some adjustment tools and basically two pieces of paper. So uh, you don't need any test equipment. Basically the test equipment you need for what I'm going to show is built into the radio. That's your marker or your calibrate button down here and the meter. We can just use the panel meter right here in ALC. So the first thing to do, turn your radio on, turn the heaters on. Now there's a slide switch on the back of the radio straight down from here that's marked SG and then it has an on off position. You want to turn it in the off position because um, we don't want to be transmitting on air. So we're going to want to put the mode selector switch in CW, the meter in the ALC position. Now, the pages you're going to need or if you have the service manual. Now, this page here is not required. It just makes it a little bit easier to do because each of these coils here, you can see, they're marked with a number. Those numbers correspond to the band position. So you can see 21. If you look on here, you'll find 21, 21, 21. Same thing for all the other bands. Now, the board is marked with those numbers, but you have to look down in there beside the coils, probably going to need a flashlight, so it's just easier to have this page sitting there. That's why I always print this page off out of the manual separately, so when I'm flipping through the service manual, I have these pages. I can just lay them on top of my service manual as I'm using them. But the other thing you're going to need, and I printed this out to show also, is in the service manual, you're going to look for this section right here when it comes down to coil pack adjustments. Okay, and what you're concerned with is this little box right here. You don't need to worry about the procedure they're showing right here, the drive coil adjustment. All you want, you just want this little chart right here. And the main thing we're worried about is band and frequency. So you're gonna, what you're going to be doing is, is adjusting each one of these bands at the frequency that they show right here. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to adjust one band. Um, we'll pick, let's say, 18, so 17 meter band. And what we're going to be adjusting the frequency to, or the VFO, right here, is 18.125. So we know that, so we don't need that page anymore. And you're going to, and you're going to do that, these adjustments, for each one of those bands. Normally you start off the top and work your way down through. I don't need to repeat it. I only need to do one because the procedure is exactly the same for every single one. So, like I say, radio is already in 18. So what you need to do is make sure your switch is in the off position on the back, mode in CW, meter in ALC. What you're going to do is, is push in your calibrating or marker button, and you want to adjust. The, remember the frequency it had listed here was 18.125. So 
you know, you can see when you come up, you get close to 18.125. You can hear that. And what you want to do is, may not be exactly 18.125, especially if your frequencies are off a little bit. But what you're looking for is, is a peak meter reading here. Okay. Once you've peaked the meter, don't touch the VFO again. Now you want to come over to the drive control. Do the same exact thing. Peak the drive control. So now we have it peaked. Do not touch the drive. Do not touch the VFO. All the other adjustments we're going to do are going to be on the inside. So we want to adjust the antenna section and the RF section in receive, and we'll be adjusting the drive in the send mode. So we're going to be flipping this switch into send when it comes back to drive. So what you do is, is just come down inside of here. Now, for as far as tools, actually, I guess I should cover that. You don't want to use metallic tools. I'm going to be using ceramic adjusters here. You can use Delrin, nylon, plastic, whatever your favorite diddle sticks are. If you don't have anything, you can make your own. Take a old ballpoint pen and shove a toothpick in the end for the smaller one, because these front ones are rather small, and the ones back here to drive are rather long, but you can make your own out of wood. Just make sure it's something that's non-conductive or non-metallic because you don't want to go sticking a piece of iron down inside of that core because that's going to throw your alignment off. As soon as you pull that piece of metal out, it's going to change. So we're going to adjust and receive the front two, which are the antenna and RF, and we're looking, we're going to be adjusting for peak meter reading here. Because you can see if I go, you can see how the needle moves there. peak. Go back to the one in the RF section. I work around the camera here. Blasted things always in the way. Okay, we've got that one peaked. Now what we want to do is adjust the drive. tool in there and what we're going to do is now you can leave the marker on doesn't matter if you turn it on turn it off I just leave it on that way I'm not flipping it on turn it on turn it off for each section but what we're going to do is is flip into send now and again we're going to adjust for peak meter reading flip back to receive you're done if you did everything right your receive and your transmit will peak at the same point Easiest way to test that is adjust your drive control here for receive for peak meter reading. Flip in to send, adjust it, and see if you can get they should peak at the same point. And in this case, they do. So that's the very easy way to tell. If you've adjusted, now if it's off a little bit, you can go back in and run through it one more time, just fine tune. And I actually was off just a slight bit there. Yeah, just a hair. It is off just a hair. But I, I, the camera's kind of in the way, and you really need to get down close to the meter and look at it. Because I'm telling you, when you make those adjustments, the tiniest bit of needle movement can actually make a fairly large difference in between receive and trans, at least as far as your meter's concerned here. So I'll run back through that. Like I said, I re really need to get in. The camera's kind of in my way here. But that's extremely close right there. You, that's not a, a difference you'd notice on air, but like I say, I, when I go through it, when I do the full alignment on this, um, I'll make sure I, I get it perfect. But that's the procedure. It's very simple. Like I say, no test equipment required. All the test equipment is built into the radio. You need a signal generator. There's your signal generator. You need a meter. There's your meter. Um, only other thing you need is something non-metallic to make your adjustments, uh, and that's it. Now, the one thing to watch when you're adjusting these, you'll notice the drives are in a little bit different location. So if we look at the, the chart here, you can see 
the antenna and the RF sections, the cans are laid out exactly the same. 1.8's over here, 7, 7, 3.5, 3.5, 14, 14, 10, 10, and so on. The drive section, they're in the same rows, but they're a mirror image. They're flipped, like they flipped them over this way. So you can see it's 7 at the top of this section, 7 at the top of this section, but it's 7 at the bottom of this section. So just make sure you don't go top, 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 because if you do that, you're going to be adjusting. And it'll be fairly easy to tell because you'll be adjusting in transmit and nothing's going to be happening. So just, just pay attention to that. But that's what you're going to be adjusting. All these transformers here, here, and here are the coils. Um, and what you're doing is, is just bringing each one of these in so they're resonant. They peak out at all at the exact same point. Uh, and once you get that done, you should no longer have uneven transmit and receive problems. Uh, you know, once you adjust for a peak in transmit, you know, your normal tune-up procedure, uh, when you flip back to receive, you should be able to turn the control and the volume will drop. Doesn't matter if you turn to the right or to the left. Wherever you peaked it on transmit, when you turn the control to the right or the left and receive, it should drop because the receive should be peaked at the exact same point. So I hope that helps somebody out. Like I say, this is a fairly simple procedure. You really don't need <laughs> need anything other than something to adjust it with. Um, service manual. Don't even need the whole manual. You just need basically the one page. Like I say, the coils are actually marked in the radio. This just makes it a little handier having the alignment adjustment points page. But uh, like I say, that'll that'll help get you back back on track. That way, when you're you know you're putting out maximum smoke out of the antenna jack, but your receive sensitivity, yeah, it just kind of and that's usually the indication. You're transmitting fine. Everybody can hear you. But your received sensitivity, just, yeah, it's just not there. Or you'll notice that it might be fine on one band, but when you get to the other band, yeah, again, you know, received sensitivity seems fine on one band, but when you get to the next band, it's not so great. And you get to this band, and it's fine, and this band, it's fine. But when you get to this band, again, maybe the received sensitivity is not great. That's because there are adjustments for every single band in here. So it can vary from band to band, and that's a good indication that your coil packs, uh, and that's what they, like I said, that's what these are commonly referred to, the coil pack adjustments, because there's a pack of coils here, a pack of coils here, and a pack of coils there. But uh, I hope that helps somebody out. Like I say, simple procedure, pretty much anybody can do it.